So hello once again, everyone. And welcome to the last discussion panel for Reworks Agorex Fera Day 2021. Um, you already see the title on the screen, and I would like to welcome very quickly Nefeli Meg, Guya Sancini, Danai Yorganda, and of course Dimitris Aradovulos to discuss everything around this cancel culture. Please welcome them. Hello, friends. <laughs> okay, so um, I want to thank everyone for coming here to attend this interesting conversation we're going to have. And I'm going to make a small introduction. I'm going to tell you who am I and what we're going to discuss. And then I'm going to ask <laughs> my fellow speakers over there who are they and what they do. Are you right? Yeah, sure. Okay, great. Okay, so I'm Nefeli. I'm 24 years old, I'm a law student graduate, I graduated last year and um, now I'm currently studying to enter the bar and since last year I have my own YouTube channel and social media accounts in which I try to explain lawyer stuff in a comic and simple way. And I'm gonna make a small introduction, as I said. So in this day and age, we as individuals uh, do not live our lives as privately as our parents did. Everything we do, we do it in public, we do it online. And, um, <coughs> sorry. You're doing great. <laughs> Relax, do an Instagram story. <laughs> you may be canceled. <laughs> I might get canceled, okay. so. Um, as I said, everything we do, we do it online. Hence, if we say support or uh, promote something that other people might find offensive, uh, then these commentators swarm, piling on the criticism via social media channels, and then we get largely cancelled, etc., etc., etc. So, as you know, algorithms love uh, anything that sparks intense emotion, either positive or negative. And it is more likely to make this content go viral, right? And going viral means that you don't get cancelled from a small group of people, but you get cancelled from the whole world, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So today with me I have Guya Santini, uh, Danai Yergado. Yergada. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm quite anxious, I'm so sorry. But you might hear my voice trembling. I'm so sorry about that. So I'm going to start with Guya. <laughs> Please tell us who are you, what you do. Let's start from the basics. Can I get straight in the middle of the thing? Because we spent like two minutes before getting each other's names pronunciations right. Because today, if I pronounce your name wrong, it's a big thing. I, my name is Guya. I've had my name mispronounced all my life because it's not that common in Italy as a name. Okay. So if I had been a child today, it would have been everyday drama. Otherwise, it was simply, you have a strange name. People get it wrong. I mean, it was a simpler age and maybe it was better. I, I know kids will think I'm only saying so because I'm an old lady and they say, oh, the old times, they were so good, our green was my valley. No, you're not old. <laughs> <laughs> you're young. But I think we should be less prone to drama. Okay. Okay, okay. If I can cut to the chase. But you had asked just what I do. I'm a writer. Yeah, okay. <laughs> You're a writer. You live in... I live in Italy. Uh, this year I've published a book about these issues, about how fragile we're all becoming. Okay. And uh, about uh, this is the age of touchiness, of sensitivity, of uh, being offended even if someone gets your name wrong. 
Yes, indeed. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. You cut straight into the matter of things. And you guys, let's ladies first. Don't get offended if I say ladies oh, first. Don't worry about <laughs> okay. it. Okay, so maybe you should ask my pronouns because I could go by uh, non binary or something. Okay, I'm deeply sorry. I hope I don't get cancelled today. <laughs> so um, I'm Danae Yor Yorgada. I don't know if I should say with an English accent or in Greek. Um, we both are YouTubers, actually. We have the same channel. He's my boyfriend, but also my partner uh, in work and in life. So and cute. in crime. And in crime, exactly. But I'm the front woman, and he's behind the cameras mainly. But you will talk about yourself, I guess. <laughs> yeah, oh, don't worry, you can say no. it. Uh, I, I made a joke, but of course, I have to apologize because, you know, it's a serious topic, and this is, at this point, this is my whole life, you know? We are uh, YouTubers, so we make videos, we talk a lot as friends, as boyfriend and girlfriend, and we would like to keep it simple and light, but at the whole time I'm thinking about what I say, because I feel like I can offend easily someone, and it's not, never my atten um, intention uh, to offend someone, but, Nowadays, it's so difficult to not offend someone, at least one person. Uh, how many years you, do you oh, do yeah. that? We do almost 10 years now. 10 years, great. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, everyone is going to get offended from wh what you say nowadays. Mm -hmm. And Dimitris, you can talk now for yourself. <laughs> Last but not least. <laughs> Last but not least. <laughs> yeah, I'm Dimitris Sarantopoulos. Uh, and, uh, yeah, the, my occupation is uh, behind the scenes YouTuber. I have studied economics and marketing. And uh, we do also commerci commercial work outside of uh, the YouTube channel, mainly me. And yeah, it's whatever that I said. We do it all together. And I want to point uh, what Gaia said about the name. Uh, I'm going straight to the point uh, <laughs> of things. <laughs> and, um, okay. You, you know, Gaia, the, the main difference with your name and what you said about how it was in the past and how it is now, the main difference, I think, it's like in the past, you had the human interaction. If someone came to you and said, oh, you're Guya, Zuya, or whatever, she can tell by your body, body language, by your face, that you didn't mind. But on the internet, they don't have that, uh, you know, interaction. You're I'm not sure it's only that, because you just said Gaia instead of Guya. And I, I if can... I was a contemporary, <laughs> I'd say Excuse you're me. doing it because I'm a woman. And since I'm a woman, you don't mind because you're a male chauvinist pig. White as well. While I know that you just made a light mistake, which nobody yeah, cares I, I about, know what you not mean. me at least. I know. I know. But you, can, you know, in, in life, you don't have a black and white always. It's so, in life, it's uh, shades of gray, maybe sounds. Yeah, spectrum. Like, <laughs> yeah, it, it is a spectrum. And I think we have to give um, a bit of a room to before uh, criticize someone. And uh, I, I know I'm running al already the conversation. It's I'm okay. Taking your <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to. You can. You can she talk. was trying to have an orderly debate, and we're just randomly. Thinking maybe maybe this is around. this is a random debate at a random venue. <laughs> Everything's so random. Well, anyway, um, I, I want I wanted to ask you that you basically you have lived in England England for ten years. You live in Italy. Uh, have you uh, for how long have you lived uh, in the Netherlands? Yeah, um, at around nine years. But I was a child. So okay. So for. F with you too, that you, you are adults and you have lived uh, at a foreign country. I want to ask you, is this the same amount of counseling you get outside of, you know, in Europe? Like, is this the same situation um, uh, when you compare the situation here in Greece? Uh, is it better? Is it not? The guy who invited me told me we don't have a cancel culture in Greece. And I said, oh, I'm so envious. <laughs> Really? Who said that? Did you say that? 
<laughs> okay, he's, so he's yeah. guilty of that. But in Italy, uh, we have a lot of people who say cancel culture doesn't exist. Okay. And I think we should decide what we talk about when we talk about cancel culture. Uh, okay. It is true that in Italy you don't get fired for something you've said or tweeted as it happens quite normally in the United States because we still have some sense of ridiculousness and we know that if you tweet something it's not nothing you should be you should have your your life ruined on you are more f flexible on these matters yes but uh, i see people asking for my cancellation like every other day or something like that on and social media on social media and quite often they get it wrong what i mean is that they ask, uh, they tag a newspaper I'm not writing for anymore, or a publisher okay. who is not my publisher, because the people who ask for you not to publish anymore are not your readers, are not people who buy books or who buy newspaper. And so they're just asking for a punishment. They don't want the paper. Uh, do not buy. talk about punishment yet. Okay. I'm, I'm going I'm to come to this, okay. okay. So, so, so it's it's here in you. You haven't lived in Greece to know how how we get we cancel someone. It's okay, Dimitris. Tell us, you have lived here in Greece and in the UK. Uh, what your opinion on? Um, I don't think cancel culture has borders, uh, may, but you know, uh, in Mediterranean, in Mediterranean, we live. We are more like uh, outgoing. Uh, we maybe get uh, a bit easy on uh, on each other, uh, but I think you can find it like on your sector on comedy, pretty difficult right now to talk openly about subjects. And uh, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, may maybe one reason that 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 happens is uh, people. Yeah, sure, they like to get offend offended. And um, they try to find, uh, not a scapegoat, but something to please their own values. So they make a projection. Maybe in England it's more strict, well, I say like US, because uh, the society is like uh, more focused to what the politician says, say, and, or what uh, the government or the ce celebrities are doing. Okay, great. Here okay. We, are, we are like more like laid back. Okay, okay. That's why I think. Okay, I have it. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. Um, I feel that we are committed to online punishment, online punishment, and it actually it makes us feel sometimes better or superior, and we kind of enjoying it. It's like a guilty pleasure. Okay, I'm going to start with you, Guya. I think Greeks study Catholicism as well as Italians do when they're kids. And one of the most famous history of the Catholic religion is Pontius Pilatus asking, who do you want me to free, Barabba or Jesus Christ? Okay. Barabba is a thief, and Jesus Christ is Jesus Christ. I mean, he's quite famous. Famous guy, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> we usually learn that story to learn that people get it wrong, and they ask for the thief to be freed, not for Christ to be freed. Okay. But the real matter is that you shouldn't ask a shouting crowd to decide about justice, because the shouting crowd cares about itself. When we ask for someone punishment online, we care about, si the, the Americans call it virtue signaling. We care about this mic is something strange. Um, we care about signaling that we are on the right side, that we are the good guys, that we are asking for the bad guy to be punished. It's not about him. It's, it's, about, it's us. about us. Because we feel we are right. It's, it's, it's what it's called. It's what is called. Uh, I can't talk anymore properly. Uh, it's what is called uh, performative activism. Performative activism. We Did are, I get it we right? Are performing the role of the good guy. But deep down inside, maybe we're not. Yeah. Okay, so then I? I do agree uh, on, on that uh, kind of mindset on uh, performative uh, activism. But I also think it's just like 
quick, instant, um, you know, it makes you feel good. So uh, when you see somebody else struggle, you know, you, you like, uh, you think, oh, maybe I don't have it so bad. Look at him. And it's like an instant fix for you. Okay. But uh, they don't um, understand how it in impacts the person you are canceling, you know. That it's is It's a real true. thing. You can uh, feel feel the cancelling, you can feel the hate, and you can feel hopeless in this situation on social media. But they do it just for yeah, for for that, for for pleasure, for them, and for the uh, activism. Are you sure that the most active guys in asking for cancellations are not the ones that have been cancelled them themselves? Because yeah, I be I think there's some something of a mechanism like. Uh, if I ask for your cancellation today, everybody will look at you and nobody will care for yeah, my bad exactly. actions. Exactly. I see that like every day. It's, it's, uh, you can see it also on the comments on YouTube or every social media. Um, all the hate comments are getting so many likes and they feel like a kind of celebrity, a micro celebrity, and it's giving them uh, only positive attention. It doesn't matter if the person is saying anything hateful to the other person it's just um, a kind of validation because everybody loves hating on someone it's the mob model mobil uh, how do you say it uh, lynch mob yeah yeah exactly so i think uh, they enjoying just to go somewhere as a group you know they want to feel um, included maybe okay you find the family in the hating Everybody hates together. Yeah, yeah so um, I want to ask Dimitris, um, wh what do you think about that? And then I have a follow-up question about the family of cancelling altogether. Well, anyway, tell me, tell me wh wh why do you think we are enjoying cancelling someone? Um, of course, I agree as well. But I think it's uh, innate in our, in our human nature that uh, gossiping, judging someone, it's in our nature. We try to take sides always. That's, that's good, that's bad. I don't like to follow that. But the difference is the approach. If you go public in that, it changes the subject because it's not private. In private conversation, you can say anything. Anything, you want. exactly. Yeah. Because gossiping, you can gossip, you know, of course. in your of bedroom course. without anyone knowing. Of course. Okay, okay. Maybe. maybe uh, you don't like me and uh, you say that with your uh, friends and it's private but that moment you go public with that it's a uh, harassment you can't value it okay. and um, most people try to take sides it's like uh, they try to mob uh, reaction it's uh, they try to fit in a specific uh, subject choose this, the side that their needs and uh, beliefs fits best. So, yeah, it's, it's really difficult to value it or say that it's wrong or, or it's right. It's, that's why we have all the <laughs> conversation. <laughs> okay, so I'm kind of thinking that um, we Greeks have a high temper, right? But cancel culture came to us a bit later than it did in the US or the rest of Europe. I guess. Um, so do you think that, maybe this is just for the Greeks, sorry, Guia, but I have a, a question that we Greeks maybe, maybe do we like this cancel culture um, more than, because you know, we have this high temper, so let's get canceled that, that guy. And I don't know if it's exactly the high temper. I think it's more like following US, what everybody in the US does. Okay. Um, more following their trends, because you can see they're now talking mainly on TikTok about cultural appropriation here in Greece. Okay. But I don't think it's the same. As in the US. Yes, yes we don't have the same yeah, problems. Of course, we have racism and everything, but I don't think it's the same. They have the same problems with the US, but we take their trends, if we can call that that way, cancel culture, and we put it on our um, you know, platforms and everything, but okay. we don't have the same issues. We have different issues, 
Of course, we have to be accountable about our words and everything, but cancelling is, is a whole, whole different thing. Okay, okay, I see what, what, what you mean. Okay. What she says describes perfectly Italy as well. What? It, it, what she just said about Greece describes Italy perfectly because it is a fashion. It is something we uh, repropose, we emulate. We, uh, uh, the, the French philosopher René Girard called it désir mimétique, the desire to be like someone, someone okay. else. And we, I, I see it in Italy, online debates are all with American jargon that doesn't make any sense in exactly. Italy because it talks about a different culture as far as integration of races goes or as uh, gender wars go. And they, they just replicate it. Okay, so it is not adapted in your culture. Right? It, it's not. You, you take like... It's lifted uh, like, uh, like you lift uh, a, a fashion from Rob. From from okay. Correct word. She apologized for it, but she shouldn't. <laughs> okay, okay, great. Okay, so um, cancel culture is, as we said, a form of public um, shaming. So public that you don't get canceled, as we said, by a small group of people like your town, but you get canceled from the whole internet. And um, I feel like cancel culture does not give the person that did a mistake to learn from his mistake and be better, but it immediately labels this person as bad. And this reminds me of the retributive justice, justice system, and I will explain to you what that is. It's a system that is based merely upon um, the punishment of the offender rather than the rehabilitation of him. And it's the system they use in the States. In the the retributive justice. Yes, but here, let's say here in Greece, we have the exact opposite system. In Italy, theoretically as well, we have the opposite the system. The opposite system. So uh, I wonder, wouldn't, wouldn't it be better if we try to raise awareness about the call out culture, which is when you're calling uh, the awareness on someone's wrongdoing and give him the chance to make amends and be a better person. What do you think than I? Of course, I? I'm glad because okay. when I was a teenager, I didn't have the internet as of today. You know, we did have some Facebook, and I had met some MSN, yes, High Five, exactly. MySpace. <laughs> so we had I've just a telephone in our house wired <laughs> to the wall. <laughs> so um, we had cars. When I was already had cars, you wouldn't say. You had cars. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I always think as myself as a feminist and as an open-minded person, but I, ca I faced my truth a few years ago when I saw some old Facebook status of, my, of mine. And okay. I was quite shocked, actually, with what I said. Did you scroll down? The yeah, yeah, exactly. Why? <laughs> Just Did you fun. have enough, enough time? Fun, I must say. Okay. Um, You're a masochist. <laughs> yeah, this exactly. is kind of masochistic uh, behavior, sorry. Yeah, so I'm glad I'm n I got never cancelled from these Facebook, uh, Facebook statuses, but um, I do grow from that, you know, it's not my opinion today, and I show, show it clearly on my social media. I, I would think that someone couldn't cancel me of something I've said in the past because I've grown as a person. But I feel with cancel culture, they don't allow you to grow from your past. You have also that question in the future. Uh, it's yeah. okay, it's okay. I'm going to rearrange things. Yeah, as as you course. said, no worries, no worries. So, yeah, call out uh, culture is much, much better because, of course, we have to grow from certain things. And uh, we, with, actually, the, the, the main goal is just to make people better, you know? Not to, not to just cancel them and Throw put them, them aside, yeah, put them aside from the society in the cancel club with yeah, all the other canceled artists. Some people, and you know, not everybody's lucky to grow up in an uh, open-minded uh, environment. Okay, yeah. So we have true. to always keep that in mind, and it's never too late to learn. Well, it's never too late to learn. Dimitri, tell me your opinion on that. Um, it's a bit different because I grew up uh, when the internet came out and the internet at the start was, uh, you know, um, you can have your voice, your anonymity, and it was a free place. 
and uh, you had like right now um, voices that they can be heard for the first time and that's a powerful weapon for minorities and for all of us and uh, but like everything it's a tool and it's how we use it that define us. Yeah, a gun can kill a person, but it can save a life too. Yeah, but it cannot make a life. And uh, that's true. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's a tool because you is. said okay. It, it is. It, it, you know, with all the tools, you can. It's how you use it. You're perfectly right. But we try to push the boundaries of what we believe and what we want to express to the world. And some of that, some of that is flexing, because sometimes we we, we wanna see other people how we th look, you know force other people how they see us. We are we are not good. Mm -hmm. We are great. Okay. And uh, with all that, you losing uh, you losing uh, the value of the internet. Like now, you have companies try to you know make. Uh, you know, uh, databases with all our, all our infos. Okay, so you, you talk about how the evolution of internet and how. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And we're losing about all that uh, that's great with... Uh, with the anonymity sometimes. Yeah. Okay, I see, I see what you did yeah. there. Goya, tell when me. When she was mentioning that she found uh, her old post and she was thankful that nobody cancelled over it, I was thinking that the thing I'm most grateful in my life is that social media was not around until I was 35. Because, and don't look at me like that, I'm oh, old. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I, I was a bit, yeah, I was, in my mind I said, how old is Guya? Like, I would totally say that you are 30 something. I'm 49 in two weeks. What? what? Sorry, <laughs> she doesn't look like 49. So, yeah. No. Yeah. No. No, please don't do this. No. <laughs> You want me to show ID? Okay. No, 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 it's okay, it's okay. I don't believe you, but anyway. <laughs> believe me, please. And I'm grateful because I, I'm still doing a mess on social media every other day. But if I was 20 or 30, I sometimes think of what I said, what I thought, what I, I wrote when I was like 25. I wrote on newspapers and fortunately newspaper went not online. Because if people found thing I wrote 20 years ago, I would be in jail. Really? <laughs> because I, I, I'm joking. I'm okay. Joking. It's an hyperbole. <laughs> uh, there's no jail for words evil today. And I could tell you that I've grown and that you have to grow. But it's not. It's just that I've learned that some things you can't anymore say publicly. Okay, so... Now, I'm, I'm wondering, have you ever been cancelled or called upon something you have said? Yeah, like yeah, hundreds but, uh, of times. At uh, which point and then, at which point? Because you said that you have said many things in your past that could have been cancelled, but they didn't. And there are things in, in the... Let's, let's do it before and after, before and after social media. Okay. Uh, so in the last 15 years, I've said multiple things that someone tried to get me cancelled on. So, but uh, did they succeed? No. But it was a question I was posing at the beginning. If you try to cancel me and not succeed, does it mean that cancel culture doesn't exist? This is a question you're asking me? Yes. <laughs> because I think this is the, the question. When people say in Italy, cancel culture doesn't exist because you've never been fired. Okay. First, being fired is not the only offense, uh, or being fired or being arrested for your words is not the only... See, a consequence. And co yeah, sorry. Consequences. Uh, okay. But uh, offense was a good lapsus. Freud wasn't a <laughs> stupid one. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you ruin my psychological welfare, or uh, uh, if you cause some trauma because I've been uh, insulted for weeks uh, on social media, or because my boss uh, called me and said, while well, we're considering your position, even if after that I haven't been fired. Is it nothing? No, of course it's something. And what I'm asking is, what's the first incident that comes in your mind when I ask you if you ever, uh, if you ever get, if you have ever been cancelled? 
the, the, the granddad, the one that's so big that you remember, you're gonna remember it like forever. Oh my God. Uh, okay, there's one where uh, a guy uh, at, uh, was quarreling with a guy I know on Twitter. And the guy I didn't know was the orphan son of uh, a man who had been killed in Afghanistan. Okay. And at a certain point, the guy wrote, I know what I'm talking about because they killed my father. In Afghanistan? He didn't mention it, but okay. it, it, it was his, his, his dialectic choice was to use his dead father. Oh, okay. So I tweeted, well, I wonder how many points you get in the debate if you mention your dead father. I didn't mention the guy, but of course the guy found the tweet and the fabulous detail which would make a screenplay good about this <laughs> is that he found it some days later and when he found it, it was the anniversary of his father's death. <laughs> so I became the one who insulted his father on the day of his father's death. Okay, that, that might have been really bad. That was really bad from their point of view. I, I must say I have some fun when people ask for your head online because I find it a mechanism really good to observe. I, I think it's good material to write about. Okay, fair uh, enough. I, I don't know, maybe I'm... <laughs> okay, but when, when, when this incident took place, um, what happened then? I mean, did you get cancelled? Like, did, did, did you lose uh, followers or your boss said something to you? Or My boss said something to me. I explained how the, how the story had evolved. But it's really... I, I don't think that's the main part. The main part is not real life. The main part is what happens online. What happened online? Did they get in on you, what like, with comments? What happened online is that I think it's been, like, 10 years or so from this thing. And... People are still mentioning it. Okay, that's bad. Whenever uh, someone says something about me, there's always some someone coming up and said, "But you know what she told that guy? She's a bad and person." And it and a dead person, etc. Okay, so you guys, Dimitris, have you ever maybe you know we have the channel together, and your face is m more shown than Dimitris, right? So I wonder, um, is is your personality, have your personality been cancelled more than Dimitris or haven't? Of course. Um, okay. okay, maybe not cancelled, but hated on. Um, Dimitris, first, he's a man, so everyone, everything is excused. Um, sad but true. Sad but true, <laughs> exactly. I'm the comic relief. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. The channel is more mainly focused on me rather than Dimitris. Dimitris is a part of my life, so you you see him, of course, but not. He's not the one who takes the um, yeah all the, the attention and the blame. The negative course. comments. Yeah. The maybe. negative comments are always about me and yeah. what I say, of course, never about Dimitris. I think you never ha have had a not comment. not a single one. No. Not a no, single no, one. And I can tell the racist joke. I can tell. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, in the in the. You're excused for for a joke, and yeah. I'm excused. And if the night takes uh, say something. I don't know, even mild, you know, she gets I'm hate. Very Maybe sexist, uh, it is. Sexist. It is, it is very much Can so. Can I say that I find it fantastic that they tell this story where she is the important one and is backstage, and yeah. what we get from it is, oh, it's sexist because they don't comment about it. They don't comment about it because they see you. Yeah. I know, but um, you can see him as well on the videos. He's not behind the ca only behind the cameras, so it's okay for but him. You're the star. That's why they comment on you, not because they're sexist. Uh, um, yeah, but it's you know you can see the difference in w w what they're uh, holding me accountable for and the difference in Dimitris. You know, as he said uh, uh, himself, he, he can say whatever he wants. And he's a part of my life as Mikri Holandesa, as my YouTube channel, as our YouTube channel. And, um, but I have, can say something like, oh, the last one, I was sort of cancelled. I said I don't like the Saloniki. Did you say that? <laughs> yeah. in, in a YouTube 
video. Yeah, yeah. Oh, great. Uh, and the irony is that I'm here, you know. Okay, so, uh, but... I said I don't like the uh, historic part, the architectural part. It's not my cup of tea. I said... It, okay. I didn't say it was bad or so. I said it's not my cup of tea. Okay. So I got all the hate from... We, we, want, we don't want you back in Thessaloniki. And um, you don't know anything about our history. And... They came per to personally attack me, and all I said, I said also as well that the food here is great, the best ever, <laughs> and uh, <Okay. laughs> I really okay. enjoy it. My personal take on how people get offended online is that local offended are the worst one. I mean, when you talk about their city. Whenever I say bad things about Rome, I get a wave of hate. Okay. I don't know but why. Worse, that if, worse than if I talk, I say bad things about their mothers. <laughs> okay. Which for an Italian is a sacred thing. Uh, here too. Okay. Here too. Okay, so um, you haven't had a great incident, like the one that happened with the famous Greek online app that, we, that it got cancelled very recently. Or uh, what, what happened to... or. You know the incident with Billie Eilish? She almost got cancelled for a video that surfaced after six or seven years. So, as you said, you you saw some stars of yours. And in this video, Billie Eilish was... Um, I think that... Um, I don't find it right or... Um, I don't think it's okay when you hold somebody accountable for what they did in the past, regardless of who they are now. How How... how have you experienced? It's another thing that we've taken from Americans. Americans started counseling people for things they said in college or in high school. And recently in Italy, there was a sports star uh, and somebody, I don't know how, found something he wrote on Facebook like 10 years ago. And 10 years ago, he was 17. And I mean, I don't want to tell you how I was when I was 17. You were 17 yesterday, but <laughs> I, I, I was 17 in another century, literally. Okay, yeah, the, the same thing that almost happened to Billie Eilish, because when she, she said these things, she was 11, not 11, it was 2011. She was like, I don't know, like 12, 13, maybe. I don't know, I, I'm, I'm bad at math, but anyway. Um, but how ha, have you experienced something like that? Like, no, like not a single know. incident. <laughs> Not a single incident to lose followers, to lose uh, your audience. No, and I don't believe you can lose someone. I mean, you see, even with big American YouTubers who are cancelled for more serious things, they still have a group of following. And they're okay. always coming back because the drama sells. So you actually never lose followers. I think maybe for a small period of time, but you can get them back. And okay. the question uh, earlier as can you can get cancelled? I think also, if you let the people cancel you, you can get cancelled. But if you don't let them and you keep going and you keep working, okay, maybe there are a few who will bring up the past. But Pro producing, uh, uh, when you say keep working, like producing content, is yeah, this what, what you, you mean? Yeah, what you do, you keep doing you, I mean, and maybe getting better and grow out of your uh, cancel phase or something. Okay. So I think it's also, you can grow out of the cancel, canceling. Uh, so do you think that this is a trend? That, uh, that you keep supporting the cancelled artist or a company that got cancelled just for, you know, for the spark. Like Ex exactly, you can see it with the delivery app, you know. Uh, yeah, Everybody but took screenshots of, uh, exactly. I deleted the application and, you know, today we had a talk and it was like, yeah, I deliver from that uh, app. So. Okay. Yeah, so. but it, it's different, isn't it? Because... Uh, if a person gets cancelled, uh, you know, a comedian or anybody, um, you try to find the reason, because maybe you agree, maybe you disagree, you, you try to find the story. But if it is if it is company that gets cancelled, because the company tried to follow a marketing trend, we are supporting that, or okay. we are good on that occasion and the other, you don't care about the company. You don't care about the politician getting cancelled. You want to force them to make the they make change. So the cancel culture in these situations, maybe it's not in our benefit, but 
we can try to force change like a political acts politically or psychologically yeah agree. Yeah. it's very interesting that this app that got Cancelled. Maybe cancelled, maybe not. It was a trading topic in Twitter for many But days. it was about works, workers' rights. Yeah, exactly. Which is exactly the thing they don't care about in the States. Exactly. The, the real difference is that culture was born in a place where they only care about civil rights because they don't have workers' rights. They think the economy doesn't matter. They think it only matters if you're female or if you're black or if you're trans or whatever. And the fact that we import it, but adapt it in some way. Sorry, I turned off the mic. Okay, I'm not good at this. <laughs> okay. Yeah, please continue. No, it's, we were saying before that there's no adaptation of cancel culture to our culture. But maybe this is an adaptation because we take the mechanism and we put it on thing we always cared about. Europe has always cared about workers' rights. Right, that's right. Okay, okay, so I see your point of view. Um, what, what I wanted to ask you is that, you know, uh, what happened to a few months ago with Donald Trump's account on Twitter? It got suspended for 12 hours because he called the people who stormed into the US Capitol. He got cancelled from Twitter, not suspended. No, he was permanently suspended. He was locked out of his account for 12 hours. Yeah, but then they deleted his account. Okay, it's not on Twitter anymore. Okay, okay, okay. So p permanently suspended. Um, um, yeah. Do you think that these kind of actions, like blocking somebody indefinitely, uh, raises questions about how social media handle the right of speech? Yeah. Who what, wants to start? Yeah. The, okay, okay. Dimitris. I completely, a hundred percent, I disagree. How they manage the thing because uh, we try to have a democracy and we try democracy is not something that you achieve and that's it for the, the rest of your life you have to build on it and we don't want to have a twitter and big co corporations facebook dictate who's cancelled and who's not yeah trump is a bad apple yeah he tried to <laughs> force he, his followers on the parliament, but that's, you know, issues that Part we of have, the yeah, democracy. We, th yeah, that issues that we have to resolve in a, okay. in a democratic, you know... Kind of way. Yeah, kind of way. Okay. I do somewhat agree. Okay, mostly agree, but I also feel like it's very dangerous because you can uh, misinform, um, you know, you can, yeah, misinform many people on serious stuff like health, you know, we are having COVID. As, as we see today yeah, happening. Exactly. <laughs> so I haven't formed my opinion, uh, formed my opinion yet to 100%. So I'm like okay. in between and I'm still... 80%? Yeah. 70? Yeah, so <laughs> it's a bit difficult, I think. It's a, a bit uh, unique. Um, because you have to act now. That's the, the yeah, difficult probably, thing. Yeah, probably, probably. Okay, so Guia? I think freedom of speech must be extreme, otherwise it's not freedom of speech. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. I but couldn't agree more. I think the interesting part of Trump being cancelled is that when it happened, um, I don't remember if I wrote something, but uh, in the outlet I write for, uh, we had a debate about it. And someone was saying, well, he's the president of the United States. He has plenty of ways of communicate to the world. He, he would be the president for like one week more when he would cancel. Anyway, <laughs> um, and uh, we said, okay, well, he can't tweet. He, he will communicate elsewhere. And he did because he is on television, he's doing his things. But the strange thing is what we perceive Trump is not in my life anymore in any way since he's not on Twitter. Because I don't remember he exists if I don't see it on my timeline. Okay, so what do you suggest? It was, was that a right approach of the, the Twitter, of how Twitter handled the situation? 
I don't really know. I'm very glad I don't have to make that decision. <laughs> okay, okay. In my opinion, it was quite, kind of, of extreme. It was extreme for me, but, well, anyway, you talk. Um, I want to ask you... No, I, I agree that you have to have total freedom of speech, otherwise you can't call you, it you freedom of speech. Yeah. You, you have to have freedom even to say wrong things about health, in my opinion. Uh, I have a friend who's a, a doctor uh, that, uh, that works with the, with the pandemic in Italy. And okay. we always discuss this because I think people should be free to go online and say the most crazy thing about uh, how you can cure yourself with a margarita. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, but because, you know, as Dimitri said before, the internet was, it had more freedom, you could say, like 20 years ago. You could say more things than now. Now there are many laws that try to um, form things on the internet, you know? Like you have laws about freedom of speech online, about hate speech and this kind of stuff. So I think it has changed, but anyway. But it, it's also what, what I was telling you is that how we perceive uh, people having their right to speech has to do with what we see in our filter bubble. I mean... What do you mean, yeah? I, I mean, uh, sometimes I'm here, but it happens in Italy. Sometimes some politicians or some uh, writer gets locked out of their Facebook because they, they've written something that the algorithm uh, think is offensive. Okay. And, uh, like you get locked out for one week or whatever. Okay, okay. And everybody talks about it. This person had been sent to jail or uh, had, been, uh, had been killed. Okay. Because if we don't see someone on our timeline, that someone ceases to... Okay, okay, I see what she did there. So he's, he exists, but not online. He exists, but not online, or he exists on different spaces online. Okay, uh, different platforms. How do you, how do you decide, uh, I mean, Facebook is a private company. You can't force Facebook to have someone as Yeah, but they customer. kind of form things through the inside. It, it's not just a private company. And because you don't see it, it doesn't mean it's not there. Of course. Some of, there are a couple of names come to my mind. There are some intellectuals in Italy who form opinions every day because they write on newspaper and don't have any social media. How old are they? It doesn't. <laughs> oh, what, no, it what matters. I'm saying is that <laughs> it, it, when we say you have violated that person, right, because you have kicked him out of Twitter or Instagram, I'm not sure it's true. Yeah. Okay, so maybe if we if we kick somebody out of Instagram or Facebook or whatever, or cancel him altogether, or Twitter cancels somebody, do you think that we people forgive that person? Even if, if he exists on somewhere else, do we forgive him? Or as you say, better forever. I'm not a priest. I don't forgive anyone. <laughs> so so you don't forgive somebody when uh, they they mess up. It's not my it's not in my allowance to forgive someone. Yeah, I do agree on that one because I okay. think we put so much um, you know we give people so much praise and so much power. But they're not the ones to forgive. Only the one who got really offended by something maybe should forgive. But you can't forgive someone who offends another one who isn't offended. I mean, I don't know if you get it. So let's say you offend me and I get offended. So but you, you, you don't ha have the right to be offended <laughs> for me. Yeah, but I also think that if you get offended, it's your problem. <laughs> Yeah, maybe, <laughs> but it's my thing, you know, so yeah, I, yeah, it's I have the right. If, if he offends you and you get offended, I don't think we should uh, search for a jury to decide if of he course. was really offensive, if uh, she has a right for attribution. Let's get them, I, I don't I know, think, you know, solve you have, it. In you have way. the right to get offended, but it doesn't mean you're right. I mean, it's your feeling uh, of getting offending is a offended, offended <laughs> is a feeling. All it's good. not something you can say it's right or wrong. So you have to keep always that in mind. There are always two sides to a story. Okay. Two 
When have we decided that the feelings are the most important thing? Exactly, I do agree on that. It's, it's not uh, that you right should that apologize just because I got offended. I got offended, okay, but it doesn't mean you have to apologize for what she said because it, that, that was her truth. It's like if this whole mechanism is based on, on someone deciding that everyone who's offended for anything is always right. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, can you, can you, can you repeat one more time? If I uh, say something and it's something innocuous in my mind, but even if it's something harsh, and she gets offended, he gets offended, somebody down there gets offended, they write for I don't know for for a decision of a grand jury who nobody gave the. Give the power to the side. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. No, no. So basically, my approach was a different one. Um, I mean, like what happened to you know the famous Greek delivery app? Did for, did people f forgive the company at the end of the day? This is what I was asking. Of course, but it they made a change. Okay. I mean, but the change. Or is maybe they had discounts. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah that, but that. I think you know it's also a, just a change for the people's eye, people's pleasing. Okay, because okay. at the end of the day, we don't know what happens next. Maybe True. they'll fire them at the end of the day, but you know, in a more sporadic way, so you don't uh, see doesn't it. Doesn't get so much publicity, yeah, exactly. and we're not gonna find out. And so, but people are very easy to forgive when they see just kind of some All some of change. Us. All of us, All yeah, of course, All of us. people. We're not different. No, of course. And, uh, you know, the, the thing that uh, you can see with the delivery app, it's like uh, people follow trends. We follow trends because we try to live right now. Okay, and uh, people, they didn't get offended that much on uh, Hadzidaki's law that give these companies the, you know... The right. Yeah, the right to make changes. They get offended because it's trending. It's... Uh, yeah, you may you make some changes, but on other you know companies that they still have problems, uh, you may be don't you may, you may don't make that change uh, you know effective immediately. Like okay, it was a, a you, different you approach on how the this company um, handled things. Well, I want to ask if someone in the audience has a question for these wonderful people. No. We can talk no. longer. <laughs> okay. We can talk much longer. <laughs> it's a menacing. Also, it's strange you were talking about the app, and I was thinking, uh, well, is it right that we use the same instruments for punishing people who make jokes on social media and for punishing companies who don't pay their... It's strange, I mean... Uh, yeah. Is it open? Okay. Uh, it's not exactly a question. I would like just to add about the cancel culture that it's very important that there are not consequences in real life because you write something online. For example, I can say anything I want about Danai or Dimitris and if I never met them in the street, they cannot say anything about this. And also that, for me, it's so useless, and I think that you have mentioned that in one of your videos, that, for example, say something about my videos that I can make a change, or something that I can fix and I can be better, because otherwise, just hate for hate, and it's, it's useful. It's not it's useless, sorry. Yes, for, for the whole society. I mean, hate for hate, well, it's pointless. Exactly. For example, say something about that I can be better, I can make my work better. I can make myself better. For example, if uh, the night was racist, I could say something and make a change. That's I just yeah, I do agree on that. Yeah, the, the difference I think she mentioned uh, between real life and social media, uh, I don't know if, maybe it's not the same for you because YouTube is your, your, your job. Social media are not my job. So when you do something creative, what a word, uh, in your life, but not on social media. Uh, you do it in books, you do it in papers. Social media becomes the place where you rehearse. 
become the place where mm, you try things out to see how they work. You try jokes to see if they can fly. Uh, you try ideas to, to play it with people and see if they can evolve in some way that become useful in your writing. And I realized that people who are on social media mostly don't know this and don't realize this. So they react to that joke on Twitter as if it was a statement, a statement, yeah, exactly. a, a bill of law, a, a proposal for a change in yeah, society. It's the, it's the Sorry? Yeah, a university paper. But yeah. the thing is that also. they also take many things out of context and they forget about context. It's very important that they the, the, should the first chapter of my book it's titled The Death of Context because you, you never know. Uh, can, I, can I tell a brief story uh, about the death of context? No, we have a question. Um, so let's assume that cancer culture is a tool to um, hold people with power accountable for what they say. Uh, in it, it, it could be a tool uh, used for many other purposes, but right now let's say that it's about people with power. It's gotten out of hand, of course. But what do you think is an alternative to cancel culture to um, fix the problems it tries to fix, but at the end of the day it just doesn't? I think it's what we said. I'm sorry, I believe please, please, please. Uh, more about calling calling out, holding accountable someone rather than cancel them right away. You know, we've seen the thing with uh, the Greek comedian uh, actress these days. It was a, she made a, a joke in a fun a funny video. It wasn't a serious video, and everybody got crazy about her statement and forgot forgot the, uh, her past. What she did for all these people who got offended. And maybe the joke wasn't that great. Yeah, you okay, of course. Opinion as well. Of course, of course. And also, one thing I noticed is that jokes are the most hated thing in this culture. Because <laughs> we have become convinced that you can slap me, you can uh, bite me, you can kill me, uh, you can call me names. But if you laugh about me, it's the most terrible thing you can do. That is so true. That is so true. And that's a good closure because we run out of time. And really good question. And uh, I want to thank you guys. Thank, thank you. you. And thank the audience and everyone here. And thank you so much, guys, for attending this event. You can talk thank outside you. if you like. <laughs> you Great. Come find us. Thank you. Um, before you go, I just wanted to say a couple of things. My name is Alex. I'm ed editor-in-chief of the Sphera project. This is the end of the Sphera day, which is, um, well, it's an event co-produced by Reworks, Agora, and Sphera itself. I wanted to thank again, on behalf of Sphera, the speakers, the moderation. Um, I want to thank you for being here. This is a project, Sphera, uh, which is all about networking media from different countries bringing on this, this kind of debate. We organize events like this even in Krakow in two weeks and then in Budapest in February. And I wanted to thank, uh, last but not least, the whole organization, the team from uh, Agora Works. I have some names to thank. Uh, Anastasios, a big round of applause, please. Uh, um, Evangelos, <laughs> Petros, Alexandros, uh, and Alexis. And there are a couple of names I don't know. I'm sorry, but even thanks to the cameramen who made possible that this came on streaming live. There is cocktails out there, so if you want to interact with us, we are happy to talk about our project, and I guess that's it. I give it to you. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> so I would like to thank you as well for attending today. Um, we talked about NFT culture, we talked about architecture, New Era in Arts, and of course, cancel culture with these beautiful discussion panels. I just want to let you know that tomorrow is uh, day two of Reworks Agora with even uh, more beautiful and interesting discussion panel, so feel free to check the program uh, in the registration. And as Alexander told, told you, we have a cocktail party outside, so please feel free to enjoy your evening with us. Thank you so much for attending.